Hey guys, we're just waiting for a few more people to join. And then we'll get started with the video, with the live stream. Okay. Um, welcome, guys. You can comment so I can see who's watching. Uh, thanks for joining on our last stream of day five of the After Dark event. Okay. Um, let me know who's here and maybe where you guys are watching from. And then we will start with the video shortly. Around. Okay. Hey, yeah, they're coming out of the night house. Let's just say hi. <laughs> ah, all of them have decided to come out. All right, so they all just went into the night house a few minutes ago, and now they're coming out again. So that's really cool. Hi, Louisa, Devin, Simon. Thanks for joining. Mama Malt, Dad, hi all. Thanks for joining us here on our last stream of the night. Um, I'm just going to catch up with what these guys are doing. Uh, pretty much the same thing as what they've been doing in the last stream. They actually did go up all on the roof and were pretty much relaxing up there a few, uh, up until a few minutes ago. And then they went into the night house and now everybody's come out again to say hi and... Have a late night snack. <laughs> Hi, Nicole, Karina, uh, who else? Jason, how's it going? Leandri, Fulyun, how are they? Heiko from Germany. Hope to see us again in November. That would be great. Hopefully, lockdown is over by then and we can open up again. All right. Cool guys, so there's quite a few people watching, so we will begin with the stream. Um, so pretty much tonight, we, for those that haven't joined in the previous streams tonight, we've been with our Cape Porcupines. Uh, we've got four in here, two boys, two girls. It's actually a little family, mom and dad and son and daughter. So Penny, the albino one in the background, is the mum. And then Prickles and PJ and Popcorn are... The others, Prickles is the dad, and PJ and Popcorn are the youngsters. Hi, Patrick. <laughs> Thanks for joining. You said you set an alarm to join. Thanks for coming in again and watching, guys. Really do appreciate it. Okay. So temperature has started to drop now. We're down to just above 11 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's pretty much been the norm over the last five nights. The temperature is dwindling around there this time of the night okay so yeah these guys almost probably now finish off what's left of the evening meal to, <laughs> uh, to give you an idea of what we feed them as well they get quite a variety of stuff um, beetroot carrots uh, gem squash butternut pumpkin um, a certain pellet uh, rodent pellet designed for rodents. These guys are rodents as well. Uh, we also give them some fruits, not much. We keep the fruits pretty low down. Uh, so stuff like apples, uh, some banana, that type of stuff. So the, the squashes and the butternut and the pumpkin, those are quite important. The harder stuff, the carrots, um, it's very important for them. It also helps to break down and wear down their teeth that continuously grow throughout their lifetime. Let me see if I can get a bit closer. Um, my shadow hopefully won't be too much. So we've got a green lamp on here. Somebody asked earlier for a better view of Penny, our albino porcupine. So I can kind of get that now. There also you can see nicely the scar tissue that's remained on her face. From the injury that she had when she joined us um, she was caught in a trap pretty much degloved the whole front of her forehead and um, of her snout she nearly lost her eye as well 
So there's still a lot of scar tissue left over. It is eight years ago, but the scar remains. And she's doing really, really well. She's healthy. Um, she's enjoying life. So yeah, see what she's chewing on. Oh, also corn. We feed them some corn, some broccoli as well. They're not a big fans of the broccoli. They love corn. Um, like I said earlier, sweet potato is their favorite. And then the other treat that we give them is dried dates. Right. Can you hear them chewing nicely going to town? Can you hear that rumbling noise that they're making? It's Penny. So interesting fact as well, um, oops, sorry, about um, the females, are they generally always around about one kilogram heavier than your males? All right, let's see who, else, who else has joined. Le Clou, welcome. Jaku van Wollendorf from Oudzorn, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, Elise from Dolphinstrand. And we've got Patricia from New Zealand. And Bree from Arizona. Welcome back, Bree. Bree is one of our previous volunteers as well. Nice to see you again. Louise, hi. All right. So quite a few people joining us tonight on this late and last stream of the night. So I also mentioned that these guys are the largest species of porcupine in the world. And what I didn't mention is the smallest species of porcupine is the Roth, Rothschild's porcupine. It's a mouthful. Um, and they are of the New World porcupines. They're from South America. And like I said, these guys can get up to around 30 kilograms. Now, the Rothschild's porcupine weighs less than one kilogram. So it's quite a small little guy. Okay. New world porcupines generally tend to be smaller than your old world porcupines as well. Yannette, hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Saying hi from Stellenberg in Cape Town. Thanks for joining. Saying they love the ranch. Thank you very much. We appreciate all the love, guys. Janet. Um... Janet's asking why they don't get too much fruit, just keeping the sugar levels down, all right? Um, fruit these days contain a lot of sugar, um, so we do try to keep that on the low, the more healthier veggies for them in their diet. Penny's gone over having a drink of water, that's the other dam. You can see there's quite a few rocks in the exhibit as well, it's just trying to imitate the surroundings that we've got here in Oudzorn um, where we do they do occur a very rocky type of arid type of environment as well okay Anita Martinez saying hi from Chile uh, that's awesome saying she hopes she can visit again as a volunteer or intern that would be great Jaden from Kalesir Feed in Cape Town. Awesome. Thanks for joining, guys. Sarah Smith, all the way from the UK. Welcome. Says so she can't wait to visit us again. It's awesome to hear you guys are so excited to come back and see us. Um, we're happy that you guys want to come see us and our awesome animals, all of our amazing babies. So <laughs> Penny's gone for a little walk. Going off on her own. <laughs> well, the rest of the family finishes up their snacks, their evening meal. All right. So, Prickles landed up at the ranch in 2010, um, and he was a youngster. So then he was taken care of, yeah, and raised by the staff at that stage. I wasn't yet at that stage. It's a bit before my time. I started working yeah in 2013. And yeah, he's been with us ever since. And 
he was really friendly as a youngster you could go in with him and then penny came and he stopped worrying about us and he fell in love with penny <laughs> right pierre is asking do they generally sleep during the day yes they do they are nocturnal so they are active at night all right so behind me in the camp behind me is where i slept last night uh, with the pygmy hippos uh, we're going to quickly just say i hear herbie is out and about so we'll quickly say hi to him here he is he's busy having also a late night snack so hopefully you guys can see him oh no the light's a bit bad and also to focus it's struggling all right so sorry you can't see him it's a bit far away right now okay so we're back with the porcupines but i did promise you guys that uh we will be going to a surprise guest so we'll be heading that way shortly um He's not too far away in the enclosure pretty close by. He's quite a character, got lots of personality. Um, so let's go say hi to him. Okay, and then we'll come back and end off at the porcupines. Okay, so you guys are going to come with me this way. We're just going along the walkway here. Right, I've got a bit of a headlamp on. It is pretty dark here. Um, so let's traverse quickly before everybody asks that's where i'm sleeping tonight right next door to them all right so we'll keep going hopefully we don't lose signal uh, it shouldn't be the wi-fi is pretty good here Right, so you just got a glimpse of him there. Let's see if you can see him. And there he is. All right, Malcolm the Marabou Stork. For those of you that know the ranch, you know Malcolm. He's quite a character. A lot of personality. Grumpy. Looks like a grumpy old man. Okay. Okay, so Anita is asking, is there age where we'd have to separate the young ones from their parents? No, they do live in family groups, um, but what we have also done to prevent them from breeding is the boys have all been neutered, so they won't be breeding. So they all stay with in the family group pretty much for the rest of their lives. Okay, Sarah Smith is asking how Speckles is. She is doing great. Um, she's enjoying her new enclosure. So yeah, Malcolm, Marabou Stork over here, um, me and him are great buddies, uh, got a really nice relationship with Malcolm, he's one of the first animals that I actually worked with hands on on the ranch, training him, doing husbandry training with him, um, had quite a scare a couple of years ago where we needed to do surgery with him and that was successful luckily, but he's an awesome bird. I love working with him, even though sometimes he does get grumpy with me and he chases me out the enclosure. But it's his home. We've got to respect that. So if he doesn't want us in it, we don't force it. Um, Marlene, greeting from Switzerland. Hi there. The red light is for heat. All right, so it's a heating lamp for him. He enjoys, <laughs> he enjoys standing underneath the heating lamp. Uh, Jason saying it's a serious bird. Yep, very serious bird. Very serious beak. Can be up to just over 30 centimeters long. Um, can do some serious damage with that beak if he does want to bite you as well. Mm, trust me. Got a few bites on the butt already. Not fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, marabou stalks, they are quite common um, throughout Africa. Um, in some places Europe as well so they also known as the undertaker bird because they're one of the last birds seen at a carcass these guys will eat anything that fits inside that big beak all right um, so they eat carrion so dead animals they'll eat fish they'll eat insects small rodents snakes even a fully grown flamingo all right they've been known to kill and eat fully grown flamingos 
which is also quite a big bird if you think about it. Okay, so also um, some of their feeding techniques, which is pretty cool, is if there's, say, for example, a felt fire, and some of the animals will be fleeing away from the felt fire, these, will, these guys will go towards the felt fire and catch the animals that are trying to flee from it. Okay, um, so yeah, very interesting feeding techniques. They'll go stand on termite mounds and catch insects flying away. Um, on, they like to hang around larger herbivores as well, catch insects that hang around them, insects that they kick up when they're walking, like crickets, locusts, those type of things. They are also known to fish. Okay, there's a common joke that we say is that the general story is that the stork brings your baby. Now the joke that we say is this stork is not the stork that's going to bring your baby. They will eat the baby. Um, but the thing about it is that these guys live on rubbish dumps as well. And they actually unfortunately eat trash. And they have even found baby shoes inside one's stomach. So anything again that fits in that beak, they will eat it. Okay. Ryan's asking how old he is. Uh, he's 13 years of age now. Okay, not a very old guy. Um, they can get up to, like really, really old specimens can get up to around 40 years of age in captivity. Okay. <laughs> Janet saying grumpy with a question mark. Malcolm, yep. He has his days when he is quite grumpy. Okay, any questions guys? Just using a headlamp to keep the light on him. <laughs> All right, so the scientific name is Lep Leptoptilus cremeniferus, and the cremeniferus part means, oops, we're losing focus there, okay, means carrier of, or pouch of money carrier. So you can't see it right now, but underneath his neck, they usually have a large, air sac which is called a gular sac and that's where that reference comes from yep Laura, Laura that is his sleeping spot this is where he hangs out at night especially in winter when it's colder so then he hangs out here by the red light where it's nice and warm for him um, tall about 1.3 meters high that's how tall they can get all right so that's Malcolm Hope you guys enjoyed visiting him a brief one quickly. We'll go and see what we'll leave him in peace and we'll go see what the porcupines are doing. They're still busy at it. All right. Let's have a look where they are. Mm, looks like they've all gone back into the night house. All right. Yep, they've all gone back into the night house. Okay, I'm just going to take the headlamp off quickly. So, guys. Okay, any other questions, guys? Please don't be shy to ask. This is the last stream of the night here by the porcupines. Um, sorry, camera went a bit skewed there. I was just putting down the headlamp. Um, and then we'll be signing it off for the night pretty soon. So if you do have any other questions, you can feel free to ask. Janet is asking, is he a night bird too? Nah, they are mainly active during the day. They're not so active during the night. Um, as you can see, he's he was there in his resting spot, um, chilling and getting ready for bed to go to sleep. And they do sleep standing up. So yeah. Okay. So Malcolm's weight as well, uh, they can weigh up to around 8 kilograms. And then the wingspan is pretty impressive. Big wingspan can get up to 2.9 meters. That is huge. Hi Carmen, thanks for joining. Saying hi to Malcolm as well. 
right, I'm just going through, seeing if I'm missing any other comments. <laughs> I don't think so. I've pretty much got all of your comments, guys, or any questions. Um, feel free to ask. So, I uh, mentioned earlier in the this previous stream that we do jet days and challenges during the day. Um, so we did do one today. The marketing team has called it Racing Against Extinction. So you can go and have a look at that one. They posted the link in the comments of our previous um, live stream. The link, I think, is also on our YouTube, YouTube channel. And then if I'm not mistaken, they have also placed it on our Facebook page. That was fun, uh, quite cold. I went for a swim and Pablo joined me as well. Not swimming, but he did a different activity. So you can go and have a look at that and laugh at that. Um, it was, the water was very cold, just on just over 15, just under 16 degrees Celsius. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> it was nice and fun. Okay, guys, so the porcupines have gone to bed. I'm just going to come over here. Decide to see if they aren't around the corner quickly. Nope, they are all in bed. All right, so, sorry, I'm just going to switch the camera around. Okay, guys, so. That will be the end of our live stream for tonight. Uh, thanks for joining. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Uh, we won't bother the, the porcupines too much more. I think they're going to be enjoying the heat of the nighthouse now that the temperature is dropping even lower. Um, but thanks for joining us. Join us. Join me again tomorrow, uh, 8 o'clock. I'll just be wrapping up the evening. And then tomorrow night, different enclosure, different animals. Different guests joining me at 6 o'clock. Um, so come for that one, 6 o'clock. It will be pretty fun as well. We might get some rain tomorrow night. So we'll see what happens there. But yeah, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock are the streams tomorrow night again. Thank you for joining tonight, guys. Hope you had fun. Um, just a quick reminder of the flash sale as well. Sorry about that. The flash sale, you can go onto our website. Um, go to the book online section you'll see there is a little section called the after dark sale after dark event sale and you can get your entrance tickets to the ranch for when the ranch opens up again at half price so when we open again you can come and visit us and come and say hi to all of our animals and yeah get your tickets now for half price 90 rand for entrance tickets just the normal standard ticket and come and say hi to all these animals that we're talking about and showing you on these live streams. Okay, guys. So have a good night, everybody. Uh, stay safe. Stay healthy. And I will see you all tomorrow with a new adventure and a new day. I don't know what it is that we're doing tomorrow. It should be fun, as always. Uh, hopefully not too embarrassing. But yeah, stay safe. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers, guys.